Hello and welcome back to Forts and today I'm going to be doing something that I've been holding off on doing. I'm going to be showcasing the AP flag. Now the reason I've been holding off on it is because it's it's kind of a kind of an infuriating tactic to play against and frankly it just makes me feel so dirty whenever I pull out these weapons but I'll go ahead and show them off because I know you guys wanted to see more of them and frankly they're a little bit powered and uh, let's just I feel bad for these guys well, they'll they'll see firsthand just how dangerous these can be but for now let's work on up to the tech tree toward the AP flak and get the suppression going. <sighs> I'm gonna need a lot of power for these, so actually what I'm gonna do here is split this beam, build my power production right here. Ah, uh, it's not a good split. There we go. Like so, build my power production right here. And then flak above and below. That did hit my core because I split the beam. That is fine. It is a single machine gun hit. Nothing to be worried about. All right, so in order to get flak here, I need to rearrange my front a little. I'm going to be going full into these flak. Uh, not going to be building defenses around them. It's just going to be flak, and that's going to be it. So either they're going to defend it, or I'm going to die horribly. One of the two. Yeah, not mutually exclusive options. So I have a couple flak there. Put this here, get the tech going, the upgrade tech. There we are. I need to build my flak launcher's base form here. And can I fit it in there? I don't think I could fit it in there. I cannot. Alright, I'm gonna redo this a little bit. I don't have a planned design for this just yet. So I need to have two and a half here, two and a half here, two and a half up there. We're going way tall with this. Let's get that a bit of weight. But nothing a little stability can't handle. So I'm leaning back right now, so any kind of wood spam I do in the front should sustain. I sell this guy off for right now. That's straight up, like so. Yeah, that's why. And then get these going. A teammate doesn't appear to need that space for the moment. So we should be fine here. Three flak launchers. I know what I need to do. I need to sell this. It's gonna dip my base forward a moment. Let's straighten this out. Let's sell this off. Build another one of these here. Build another one of these right here. That managed to ricochet all the way around and hit the back of my base. This is fine. I can live with this. Let's put some additional defense here for these, in the form of sandbags. Upgrade these boys, and then get them upgraded a second time. Upgrade these. Wooden door here. The second upgrade. We've got our first layer of AP flak, and that AP and that sniper is on top. So let's do this like so. Get another turbine, and then once we have the energy all set up and good to go, we'll get things firing. All right. So now I think I have this all set up. Two and a half. I should do it. I'll get a second layer of AP flak there if necessary. But it may not be necessary at all. Because the fire has begun. And now they have very limited time to uh, deflect this. Because once the damage starts piling on and you run out of resources, you need help. And I'm targeting the top base here because he has any kind of thing that can stop me. The, uh, the bottom base, he doesn't. So I don't have to worry about it too much. Now I'm actually running out of... Oh, he does. He did upgrade his gun. Which means I need to upgrade... Well, my energy. Because I'm not producing enough energy to maintain these. I may not need that second set after all. Alright, then let me get some more of these. 
these are solar panels and they produce power. An alternative to wind turbines. Let's move our base up a bit more. Get some more energy production. I realize that we're that the efficiency here is not good at all, but it's the best we've got. Let's open fire again. Ooh, it looks like my teammates go an early game with those uh, upgraded mortars. So the Tanya's mod upgraded mortars fire horizontally instead of vertically like standard mortars. Not technically a straight upgrade, it's more of a side grade, but frankly it's a side grade that makes them very much, well, much easier to use. And there goes one opponent. Fall into the AP flak. This sandbag is in the way, let us remove this. Keep up the fire. At this point, I'm not sure there's much he can do. The opponent kind of has to already have something set up that'll stop this damage from up coming up. Uh, that'll do it, actually. That'll do it nicely. Got hits all over the place. Oh, that's a phantom missile. Boom. Now that's a very explosive way to end this round. I think that's really, really good. That was a nice combo. I like that combo. And we're off to round two. It looks like we've got the same players in the same positions in wealth. This time I'm going to build my base a little bit better now that I have tried building them dedicated at least once in a vanilla-esque map. I can do a little bit better than I did last time. So for this time around, just going to need my turbine in a good turbine position, which I think is going to be right there. Nice and tall, and not too close to my teammate's base here. 71% should do nicely. I don't need that fifth mine because I'm not going to be spending that kind of resources. However, I do need to get my technology up and going pretty quickly here. Alright, let's go ahead and start our base redesign. Need to go up two and a half. Oop, please go across. One. It doesn't want to connect. That's fine. It'll do that. And then two and a half here. You connect to this so it doesn't lean forward too much. Two and a half. Right there. Right there. And then two and a half again. Bit of a desynchronized first segment of the base, and that's okay with me. Like this up top, very nice. So we can get our AP flak into there, get our store upgrade center there, split this beam. There we are. Build this up, get our wind turbines right here. And right here. Rope to the back so we don't lean forward as much. Stabilize the bottom as we wait for things to build. Start off our flak base weapons here. Two and three. Have our opponents doing anything aggressive? Potential aggression coming out of our opponents. We do see some additional doors on front. Or at least one additional door. I do want to cover this so they can't see it. This rope coming in clutch. Let's get our wooden door. I do want to upgrade these before uh, upgrading my flak, because frankly we won't be able to fire the flak until we have the wind turbines upgraded anyways, so we might as well get them first and get them producing power. Right. Very nice. This is a lot nicer than last time's spaghetti of a base. I do want a couple batteries here, so we can store up for a first assault. Alpha strikes are important, I think. Actually, just one battery should suffice. And then... I'm not sure I can move these turbines any further back without colliding with my opponent's base here. Let's check this out real quick. I can move just this one, but any further back, and we start running into our... Is it? Is it going below? Ooh, it looks like the angle is just perfect. Like, even a few pixels higher would have been disaster. Let's go ahead and add these. 
seeing a couple doors out of my opponents. I might be getting some earlier aggression out of this. I realize I'm floating metal, or not floating metal, floating a lot of energy right now, and still building energy. But that's fine, because we're going to be using it. And yes, I do know my core is very exposed. I'm okay with this. So once I start firing, I don't expect any, any return fire. That's just kind of how the AP flak work. All right. AP flak online. Targeting top base again. His bottom base is defending himself a lot. And top base looks like he has something to shoot at me. So I want to stop him from doing that. Ooh, that's a sniper. Let's suppress him a little bit. I was actually an AP sniper, so I'm going to need to do this. Not enough minerals. Well, specifically metal. Just go like this, and that should help out immensely. I actually need to build a second wooden door if it's going to stop the AP sniper. I keep forgetting. I'm so accustomed to building with uh, background bracing. Alright. Let's do this. With the advent of swarm missiles out of here, I'm going to want to have some. That shouldn't have done damage. Looks like it's just a little splash would be fun. Alright, that should help with that. Let's fire back. Full suppression. Targeting forward base because he's got that sniper. Ooh, he's upgraded to an EMP sniper. That's going to cause a problem, actually. Let's defend these real quick, just to make sure nothing bad happens to them while they're offline. Yes, because once the, when the EMP sniper hit, it uh, actually removed, or disabled the doors into the open position, so I don't want those hitting me. That would be real bad. Let's go ahead and open them up again. He's got a shotgun down there, too. So my opponent is actually doing the right thing, not something that uh, you see most players do. And the right thing here is to just fire back. As you see, uh, these doors are open all the time. I don't have an option here but to fire back. So just by firing back, I'm forced to stop. The nuke. You shoot it down. Thank you. Gunners doing a good job. Let's return fire. See, now my opponent's... He's actually running out of resources here. You can see the repair on his base stopping. Which means he can't take much more of this. He has to either return fire or just, well, die trying. There's really nothing else for it. Alright, so I'm actually going to save the AP flak for the nuke here. That way we can shut that down. My opponent also going for the uh, AP flak up top. Unfortunately, he only has one of them. With the inaccuracy on them, you kind of need three in order to maintain this kind of suppression. There we go. You see at the bottom opponent here, he's completely locked out. He, he can't. Like, he actually can't. He needs his teammate to come in at this point. Just his, uh... His own weaponry is insufficient, and his teammate is targeting my teammate, which means... Well... No one's coming to save him. It's a very slow death. They don't do much damage. But it is a death that will come to him. With nothing to stop it. It's really quite... quite horrible. These weapons are just like the ultimate 1v1 weapon. Once you, once you get them down, once you get them out, there's, there's not a, a whole lot you can do about them. You have to have a plan already in place. Or have a resource pool high enough that you can build that you can enact a plan without uh without having to spend a whole lot of money on it. So look, he's about to lose all that front bracing that he just rebuilt. His only hope is to snipe, and he gets off one of the snipes. So I'm gonna have to do this now. Which means that he has time to repair. Alright. He's done? These are not. I 
Black Bay Commander ability to get those online nice and quick. Alright, open up these. Shoot the nuke out of this guy. Nuke has been removed. Look at that. Oh, he's going to try to EMP them again. He got two of them. Two is not all of them. So I'm just going to keep doing this for the moment. While I wait for the rest of it to come online again. Good thing about the EMP sniper, it doesn't really do much damage, so it's not going to stop me. It's just going to delay me. Which means he's still going to be taking more damage. And at this point, you see, he's not even repairing his entire base. Which is, uh... Ideal for me. So that means he's... I don't... I can't tell if he's out of resources right now. I don't see his repairs stopping. It just looks like he's not repairing. It's nice that these uh, AP flak have a cooldown now, or at least a, uh, an overheat meter. So I can't fire them as fast as my energy production allows. So otherwise I would just, because I'm sitting at almost 400 energy per second right now, with the overdrive commander, which gives me additional energy, so I mean, I would just completely overwhelm him faster. It would be, instead of a slow death, a very, very, very swift death. With, with pain and suffering, I just it would just be horrible. But hey, for now, I can just hang on these. I'm going to come here with the AP sniper again. Oh, nope, that's a shotgun. Uh, not enough to destroy the AP flak here. But it's, you know, it's something. We tried. Oof. That hurts. Hey, he actually got enough energy to fire off the, uh... The nuke. That was close. Bit too close for comfort. Ah man, I wish these were more accurate. It'd be so much more devastating. As is, his core is exposed. Has been for a little while now. I really want to finish it off with these. Oh, only one left. He EMP'd the others. Oh jeez. That EMP sniper. It's got a lot of range on that a on that uh, EMP. Oh jeez, my doors to our bang. Oh, he finishes it off with the, uh... He finishes off the exposed core with the Nebel Werfers, the tiny tier 3s. So now we could change targets to the top base, who's... not been quite so successful in... his minor aggressions. He's been trying to tech up, so I'm... we got a very realistic chance of just not surviving in the next minute or so. Because if he, uh, fires whatever heavy weapon he has, my base is not able to sustain it. Especially if it's, uh, one of the, uh, Tanya's upgraded weapons. Which is very likely, considering we're playing Tanya's mod. So, we'll, we'll see how this goes down. But I'm just gonna keep firing away. One by one. One by one, your armor will be removed. And these AP flak are so inaccurate. They're not even good as flak. They are good at, uh, removing armor off of bases. Oh, individual bases. Because they drain the resources of the opponent until they don't have anything left. It takes a lot of resources to repair all that metal he's got. I cannot wait to see in the lobby all the, uh, complaints that these guys have. But hey, I couldn't build metal, I couldn't build anything, I couldn't repair anything. I was completely out of resources because those guns kept shooting me. Every time. That's actually why I don't use these weapons, because they're just uh, infuriating for, to players. And then players don't want to play, and then I don't have players to play against in the lobbies. But you know. We'll just keep chugging along. Like, choo choo! Here comes the flak train, and out goes all of your metal. Yeah, the opponent's just selling off his core now, he's not even trying anymore. Look at that. They're so demoralizing. He's not even trying to, to finish it off. He's got weapons, but no. He's selling off all the things around his core. Slowly. He's getting there. He's trying. Oops. Accidentally overheated them. Look at him go. Uh, he's still selling it. He must have had a lot of uh, gear around his core. It's a little bit too much to sell off. Yeah, because you have to sell off the gear first and then the uh, the stuff on it. 
Like, if you know, you have a battery there, you can't just sell the strut that the battery is on. You have to sell the, uh, the battery first. Yeah, that's what he's doing. Now his core is open. He's letting us finish it off. And there it goes. And that's going to be the end of this episode, guys. So if you want to see more of this and to see why I'm showing this off now, make sure to check out the live streams at the end of our, at the end of every week. You can always check up on us on the Discord, but for now, have a good one everyone, and I'll see you all later.